the markets were quiet today. You wonder why that was, since the hustle and bustle of the market would always be the first thing you heard when you entered the city. Taking advantage of this rare silence, you go and see what goods the traders bought with them this time, since this time they might give you a better price. While you look at the different goods, you feel a hand suddenly burrowing into the back of your shoulder. You turn around to find a hooded figure who beckons you to follow him. Against your better judgment, you do, and the strange figure takes you far outside the city. The suspense and fear keeps you running behind him, and finally, the hooded figure stops and removes his cloak to wheel. Testri Atirkani, the local famous trader, your best friend. You ask him where he's been, and he replies, on adventures the likes you haven't seen. If you got out of the city more, you would know. But my biggest adventure took me to the desert this time. The doors are finally moving into the deserts as well. They made a small outpost by the name of Sand Fortress. I know, the doors aren't exactly the creative sort, but let me tell you what I saw. Pyramids as far as the eye can see. Large underground caverns that hold life bigger than any animal on the surface. As Testry tells you the tale of Sand Fortress, you know that this particular one is going to be quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. Hey guys, it's PG and I'm really, really scared. I mean, our walls are already carving out this place from the sand, but this is like the scariest that I've embarked in since I bought this game. I mean, I really don't hope something gigantic or some other monster comes in and destroys this fortress. There are really a lot of trees here for, even though this place is apparently a desert. Wow, this tree is like huge. I mean, we should make this tree like center of a fortress or something because this tree is really awesome. We should cut down these smaller trees though. Look at these. These aren't as impressive. Let's just cut them down. And you look at these cactuses and stuff. Look at this. Look at this beehive and stuff. This stuff really, you couldn't see this stuff in the old ASCII version of Dwarf Fortress. It really makes the game more detailed and the world more, way more vast and diverse, I guess. Well, let's cut down all these other trees too because we hate trees in this fortress. We like rocks. So, our dwarves are just burrowing through the sand really quickly. They're not the, they're that experienced. I mean, they're not good miners or anything. But they'll do. They'll get better as they go along. Our main priority, however, is to secure lodgings and make sure our food and drink stockpiles are nice and big. I mean, we have to make sure we can feed ourselves, otherwise this desert is going to get a lot more We should also make like some crafts, doors, workshops and stuff from all this wood and stuff. But we have to make sure that we build a farm plot and plant and seeds in it as soon as possible so that they can grow. Luckily, this is a desert and stuff here grows year round. So we don't have to worry about like winter and stuff and seasons where we can't grow anything. But this desert does get very hot sometimes I think. So we're just going to have to stay inside the fort. I don't exactly know how heat waves in this game work so we'll just find out as we go along. You can have fun with me as too. We're just gonna build a small workshop, a carpenter's workshop first since wood is the most numerous resource we have right now. And we need to build some bed chambers. I mean, they can be communal right now. It's not like we can afford an individual bedrooms for all our dwarves. And we should probably set up a squad system, like some security for our fort. Oh, and how rude of me. I forgot to introduce you guys to the people of this fortress. The seven dwarves were building sand fortress itself. So we have some pretty basic dwarves right here. We have two miners. They're also the masons of our fortress. We have a woodworker who is also a woodcutter. We also have our metalsmith. We also have our farmer and our most brave of yet, Udim Vaboklisar, our expedition leader, without whom we conquer this desert. And we brought along one special person too, Carl Edendakas, our fisher dwarf. He don't. He's not a regular fisher dwarf. Don't be fooled by that. He is also a very competent and very skilled hammer dwarf. He is going to protect our fortress in case any giant thing comes along. I mean, I know him alone isn't exactly going to accomplish anything. But hey, it's at least going to keep your enemies away right now. Oh, oh my god, this, this, this is what I was talking about. Giant alligators. This, this is one of the most dangerous threats of our fortress. I mean, if one of these things comes across you and they're hungry, your dwarves are gonna die. I don't like the fact that our dwarves are just standing around the wagon because they have no jobs to do. We have to give them something to do. So I'm just gonna build a farm plot really quickly so that we have at least some people 
Wait, hold up. Oh my god, guys, have you listened to this music? I li listen to it, man. Oh. Oh my god, it's like 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm here sitting here in the dark listening to this music. Bro, what are those wolves doing? Why are they howling? There are no wolves here. This is a desert. Why are the wolves howling here? Oh my god. This is scarier than Minecraft music. Now why why is this why is this in the game? This is the scariest soundtrack I've ever heard for some reason. This is supposed to be Dwarf Fortress. Bro, stop! Anyway, disturbing music aside. While all of that is building, I'm just checking our surroundings to make sure that there's nothing here. And there's our soldier Errol. He's got everything he needs. So, might actually help and guard us in case anything happens or anything attacks our wagon. I'm just going to designate a barracks for him here next to the workshop right now. Because we don't really have anything for him, right? We're going to make him train and sleep and store all of his stuff here. There he goes, there he is going to train his mix now. It's good that we have him near us, so in case anything attacks us. We're just going to make a stockpile zone here, and it's just going to designate everything to be stored in this stockpile zone, because I don't want anything there in case something comes in or steals it, comes in and steals it, like some flying eagle or something comes in and steals it, or some monkeys, that that happens. That's This, this is what this game is. Monkeys come in and steal your stuff, it happens all the time. So we need to bring all this stuff in here really quickly. If we like having our stuff around us, that is. So we're just going to have our carpenter build doors to keep the animals out. Bro, again with this music, bro. What is this? Is Jason Mori is going to start attacking us? Is this Friday the 13th or something? Is this the new Halloween sequel? What is going on? This music has me flabbergasted, bro. What? Anyway, I don't like the fact that our two stray horses who help carry this caravan are also out here. They're just being going to be bait for all the trends to come in and eat us. Oh god, there's an aquifer here. I mean, it's a very light aquifer, I guess, according to the map. We should just dig through it. There's, it's not that big a deal. I mean, this is just a temporary fortress. We need rocks, however. We need rocks to build some blocks and stuff. Oh my god, it's an order! Oh my god, it's so cute. Probably shouldn't go near it though, it might kill us or something. So a month has passed and about 17 dwarves came in as new migrants. And we also had the dwarven caravan coming in. I was kind of thinking that the dwarven caravan might not even come in because of how far away we were. But anyway, this is the f structure that we built. It's going to be a pyramid in the future, but right now it's just a wall and a moat and two bridges coming in connecting that structure to the rest of our fortress so that the doors can access it and this is going to be a huge moat and a huge pyramid with the tree in the center signifying our fortress's symbol this is our entrance a very grand entrance indeed it's being built right now but yeah things are going along ext extremely well like i this was really unexpected who knew this desert would be this safe i think i'm probably going to demolish like the two beds here so we can make our entrance bigger. And that's just bad in planning on my part, but yeah. we'll fix it, we'll fix it, don't worry about it. I have big plans for this fortress, big plans indeed. Especially with this iron that we have just discovered. We could build something really amazing from this fortress. It's really amazing what we've built here in such a small amount of time. I guess this desert is really going to be a great home for our dwarves. So yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this first part of our fortress. And more parts will definitely be dropped in the future. I'm sorry this video was so weirdly cut sometimes. But like this was my first let's play slash gameplay video. And it was really long. So I've not really experienced to doing all this stuff. But I assure you, the future parts of this playthrough will really be great. And I'll see you in the next video.